Hi class, in this video we'll be talking about lighting and materials using 3JS. In the previous video we built a basic scene using objects with geometry and basic materials with just colors, and we added a camera and the renderer to get the basic scene working. In this video we'll talk about lighting and materials which are related to each other. First I'll cover how to add lights into the scenes, and then I'll talk about how to add materials to the objects that interact with those lights. We'll look at ways to do this with both the editor and with code and combining the two together. To get started, I'm going to open up GitHub. I'm going to make sure I'm on my correct repository and I'm going to go to the finder. So I started project 3-1 last time and so I'm going to duplicate this project. So I have a copy of the old project there. So I'll call this project 3-2. We'll add some lighting and some materials in here. Then I'm going to drag this folder over to Sublime. Going to Go to 3-2 and open up index.html. I don't think we really need to change anything in here. So then I'll open up scene.js, make this a bit smaller actually, so we can fit the code on the screen. Let's go ahead and start the Sublime server and open up our Chrome window. We go to localhost 8080 and going to go to the new copy of the scene. So I can click on the first copy of the scene and then replace the one with a two. So here's our scene. We have these uh, trees and buildings, the sidewalk and the street, which were all created with code. They're randomized a bit. So there's a random height for the buildings and a random number of trees with random leaves as well. The bench and the sidewalk and the street remain the same. You can see clearly in the scene right now that all of our objects have just a color that doesn't change based on the geometry. This could be a stylized way of rendering a scene, but in the real world, physical things with 3D geometry also interact with light. And so we'll look at different ways to add lighting into the scene. I have to make a couple adjustments. I'm not going to recreate my scene because obviously that took a bit of time in the last video. Rather, I'm just gonna change a few things and then begin adding to the scene. If your scene looks different from mine at this point, don't worry, you should be able to apply the same ideas to the stuff that you have in your scene. And you could also create new stuff or create things from scratch as you're working on it. So I'm just gonna change a few things around and then we'll take a look at some of the documentation for lighting. So right now, in order to see all of these materials, I use the mesh basic material that you can see here. The mesh basic material does not interact with light, so it's just for scenes that don't have lighting in them. So if we want our objects to interact with light, I'm gonna to have to replace the mesh basic material with something else. For this video, I'm gonna go with the mesh standard material because it has a few basic options that we can tweak to get the look that we want. There are a bunch of other materials that I probably won't have time to cover in depth, but we'll look at them briefly. I'm just gonna look through my scene for any instance of mesh basic material. There's one, two, three, four, five of them. And for now, I'm just gonna replace that with a standard material so that I'll see lights once I start adding them to the scene. So I can just select each one and type mesh standard material. I can also select this and copy and then paste for each one of these. You may choose to leave some of your objects as standard if you don't want them to interact with light, and that's fine. So I've updated all the geometries, and now when we load the scene, unfortunately what we do see is a completely dark scene other than my bench, which I'll up also update in a moment. Right now, there is no light reflecting on the scene, so even though we still have colors for our objects, we can't see those colors unless they're reflecting some sort of light. This is basically how physical light works. We can't see things unless they're reflecting light back at our eyeballs. So I'm also gonna update the bench because it is also using a mesh standard material. One thing that's nice about the editor is I exported this, this bench to a scene file, which I have right here, scene.json. And I can also import that into the editor to make changes. So even though I didn't save that online, I can just import this scene again. So I'm gonna do that now before I get into anything else. I'm gonna to go to 3js.org, click on the editor. I'm gonna to go to import. And if you have a scene that you want to also add lights and new materials into, you may wanna do the same thing. So I'm gonna import my scene 
and there's my bench. I'm gonna be adding some stuff into the scene, so I'm gonna make a group for this. So I'm gonna click on the scene and add a group, and I'll name this group bench. I've noticed that it takes the editor a while to update this, so even though I still see group right here, it will eventually update to bench. So I'm just gonna drag everything that's part of my bench into this group. So now I can change the group as a whole, or I can open the group to deal with the individual components. For now, all I wanna do is change the materials on my bench items. And I'm also, while I'm here, I'm gonna click on the cast and receive shadow just in case I wanna add shadows later. So let's start with the back. I'm just gonna click cast, receive shadows. Then I'm gonna go over material and I'm gonna change this to a mesh standard material. One thing that I've noticed, unfortunately, is that it doesn't keep the color when I make the change. So I'm just gonna look at this real quick and get a sense of what it is and then make the change. So I'm gonna go to mesh standard material here and I'm gonna update this color. Again, it's black because we haven't added any lights, um, but I'm just gonna choose like a brownish color like the one we had before. And I can always change this in the future if I'm not happy with it. So then I'll go to the bench seat going to click cast and receive shadows. I'm going to choose mesh standard material and I'm going to update my color. So then for my bench legs, I'm not going to want to repeat that four different times. So I'm just going to duplicate one of my legs. So I'm going to turn on cast and receive shadows. I'm going to change the material to standard material. I'm going to change the color to a light brown. And I can always update this later. And so now I'm going to uh, clone that and move one back here. Okay. And then I'll clone it again and move it back here. And I'll clone it one more time and move it back here. I'm not being too precise at the moment because I just want to get this set up. I did notice that my new boxes are not part of my bench group, so let's go ahead and add these in here. And this will be good in the future just for a little organization in the scene. And so now I'm good to go. I'm gonna leave this here because I will use the editor to demonstrate a few things in a moment, but I'm gonna export my new bench. So I'm gonna to go to export scene and then go to my finder, open up my downloads folder. Um, I'll go ahead and call this bench.json since that's all that's really in there and add it in there. And so hopefully that will work when we start to add lights in a moment. And since I did change the name of the file, I just wanna scroll down here and make sure to update the name of the file that I'm loading in the load section. Okay. so. We've updated our scene a bit, and now we can kind of get started looking at lighting. So I'm gonna also open a window with 3js.org, and I'm going to go to documentation. And if I just type in the word light here, we'll see the types of lights that are available. There's actually a few more lights in the documentation than there are in the editor. So if I go to add, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five choices for lights to add. I'm gonna cover some basic lighting and go through each one of the lights and just talk about how they work. Uh, there's a lot more to go into when it comes to lighting as well as materials. We're not gonna have time to cover everything today. So we're just gonna add some basics. So let's start with our scene and let's start with the ambient light. So the ambient light is just like light that's applied to all of the shapes evenly. So it's not, doesn't have a source. Uh, it does have a color and an intensity. And so it's an easy way to add some lighting into the scene where there is none already. And that would actually be quite useful in the scene that we have here where everything is dark. So an ambient light can be useful just to kind of fill in gaps where the rest of your lighting is. And it's also nice to have in the beginning as I'm making some geometries that have uh, regular materials that need to reflect some light. So let's add this in here. I'm just gonna copy this code and paste it into my scene. I'm gonna scroll up a little bit before my geometries for the scene. Um, so I'm gonna 
add a new section for my lighting. And let's add that ambient light. I'm going to change the variable name because I'm going to add a few different types of lights here. So I'm going to call this the ambient light and make sure I update that in the scene. You can see it says soft white light. That refers to this color. Let's also get our HTML color codes open because we're going to be needing this. And so if we plug in the value that we see here, we can see what we'll get. So it's actually quite dark value. So it's only going to apply a little bit of light to the scene. So we've created our ambient light. We add it to the scene. So let's go ahead and reload it. So now you can see there's just a bit of light in the scene. So we can see the colors and the geometries, but they're very dark. So if we added like a full ambient light, if I turn this up to like white, now we're going to see bright colors. So the result of what we see on our shapes is the combination of the light source and the color of the material of the shape. So if we change the color of our light source, for example, if I only use blue here, so I'm going to have zero red, zero green, and full blue. Whoops. Now we're going to have a very blue scene. There are some differences depending on the amounts of blue in the different materials, but overall everything is blue. And that's another stylized look that you might like. So you might want to add that or even just a tiny bit of blue. So if we have like this basic kind of gray color, you might say, you know, what would it be like if I have kind of like a night scene? Maybe I'll get some like dark blue or some purple and just move it ever so slightly over here. Add that in there. OK, so now it's very difficult to see, but we're going to we have this little bit of ambient blue light. We can also change the intensity of the ambient light. So if it's zero, we go back to black. There's no light at all. If it's one, that's where we're going to get kind of what we saw before. We can increase it. So if we go to two, now we're multiplying the ambient light, so it's a bit brighter. But we can also use fractional values. So if I want just a little bit of ambient light, now we have kind of a darker baseline, maybe for a night scene. 0.5 is maybe a good place to start, just so we can kind of see our colors, see what we're working with, but not influence the scene lighting too much. So I'll stick with 0.5 for now. Ambient light does not have a directionality, so it can't cast shadows and it doesn't create highlights like we'll see some of our other lights. So let's go to our next type of light. I'm going to come back to directional light. I'm going to skip over to hemisphere light for a moment. A hemisphere light is supposed to recreate what it's like to be in the world where there's like a sun and there's a lot of color because the sun is so bright, there's a lot of color reflecting off of like water, the ground, other things in the, in, in the world, the sky, things like that. And so the hemisphere light is kind of divided into two different colors and it's going to light from the top and the bottom based on those colors. Let's add one to our editor scene to start. I'm going to move this bench up and move it back a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and add a hemisphere light. Notice that the top of the bench is highlighted blue, so it's reflecting the sky. The bottom of the bench is highlighted orange, like it would be if it was reflecting the ground. And so if we change those colors, if we change the top color, maybe we make it a bit lighter, that changes the overall color that we see on top of the bench, so it just adds a little bit of lightness to it. It doesn't make it a different color. With the ground color, if we make that a bit darker, it's going to add a bit more darkness to it but it's not going to change the color. So with the hemisphere lighting, you can add a lot of color. Uh, that might be, you know, if it's close to sunset or sunrise, you'll get a lot more color um, to get like a heavier effect there. Or if it's more just the middle of the day or if it's kind of a gray day where you can't see the sun, you'll get a lot less reflections. The hemisphere light doesn't have a directionality, but it does have a positionality. So if I move it down, you'll see that if it's below an object, we no longer see those reflections. But normally our sun is going to be above us in the sky, so we can leave the hemisphere light up there. So let's add a hemisphere light into our scene just to, to add kind of like some nice highlights. But I'm going to go with these slightly desaturated colors because I don't want to completely 
change the look of our scene. So let's take a look at the code for the hemisphere light. So I'll copy this. Let's change the variable name to be more specific. So we'll go with the hemi light here and here. And then I'm going to change these colors to the ones that I chose. So let's grab the hex value for this one. I'm going to copy that and paste. Oops. Looks like it didn't copy. Mm, it doesn't look like it wants me to copy this. So I'm just going to remember it. C1DA E6. C1DA E6. And then our second ground color. Um, actually want it to be even more desaturated. I'm going to go like over here. So let's see, that's 4F, 4F, 4F. 4F, 4F, 4F. Okay, and let's reload that. So now we're starting to see a little bit more of the geometries reflecting different values of light. So you can see the difference between an ambient light and a light that has a bit more directionality. So we can see the colors that reflect at the bottom of the trees versus the top of the trees. And now we're actually starting to see the lines in the tree uh, leaves themselves, which is kind of breaking the illusion a little bit. So we may have to fix that a bit later. We can also see the bench is reflecting the different lighting a bit more. And we can see the top of the buildings reflecting the sunlight. So that looks pretty good for our hemisphere light. We can also change the value of this. If we change it to something lower, then we get less highlights. If we change it to something higher, we get more highlights. This is obviously like way too bright, so we don't want to go that high. I'd probably go with 0 0.5 again. So now we have a little bit of dimensionality, and now we can introduce our directional light to get the direction of maybe the sun or depending on the time of day, it could just be another light source. So with the directional light, let's add one into our scene over here and take a look. So I'm gonna go down to directional light. So you can see by default, the directional light is pointed to the origin of the scene, zero X, zero Y, and zero Z. We can move the directional light around and that's gonna affect how much light is applied to different surfaces, how far away it is. Uh, and we can also change the target of the directional light. It's a little bit more complicated. I'm not going to get into that in this video, but there are some good resources for 3JS that will show you that. So if we have the directional light over here, you can see the left side of the bench is way more highlighted than the right side of the bench. And we can combine the directional light with the hemi hemisphere light to create basically a daytime look, like a sun look. If the directional light is directly above the scene, it's kind of more neutral. There's some highlights on the top and the rest is kind of normal. If the directional light is to one side of the scene, we get a more dramatic highlight on one side versus the other. The directional light also has a color. If we want it to be the sun, we can use like kind of a yellowish color to give just like a nice little warm highlight there. If it's nighttime, we might move this into like a darker blue area. So it's a bit more pale, like maybe some moonlight. Um, so that could be nice for a night scene. I might stick with that for our scene. And so we can change the position. We can see the position here is negative 18, 8 on X, 8 on Y, and 9 on Z. So let's just even this out. I'm going to do negative 20 on X. I'm going to do 10 on Y and 10 on Z. So that looks pretty good. And we can take a look at our bench and just kind of see if that looks nice and realistic. And let's actually, the bench has a lot of flat stuff in it. So let's add, now that we have more lighting, let's add a couple of just generic geometries into the scene. Let's get a sphere in there. So the sphere you can see really reflects a lot more of the changes in the light based on the direction since it's spherical there's more we can see the change across the surface um, let's go ahead and and increase the geometry a bit so we have more detail here so that looks pretty good and let's change the color of the material just a little bit just so we can see so that looks pretty good we can get kind of a, a an idea of how our lights will interact with the scene a bit more by using different types of geometry. So let's add that sphere over there. Let's go ahead and add an icosahedron since we have a bunch of those. 
You can give this a different color as well. And so now you can kind of see those highlights a bit more and the effect of the lighting a bit more here. And I'm gonna turn down my hemisphere light just a bit. So I'm gonna change this hemisphere intensity down so we can see more dramatic change from the lit side of the object to the dark side of the object. So that looks pretty good. Another thing that's useful is to go over to settings and just turn off the grid and the helpers. So you can just see the objects and the lighting that can be useful while you're editing as well in the scene editor. You can turn the helpers back on. These helpers don't show up in our normal scene, but you can add them if you like. If you see these directional light helper, hemisphere light helper, etc., that's get basically gonna create what you see here in your own scene. I'm not gonna use those for the video, but if you need, if you feel that they would be helpful, go ahead and add them. So let's go ahead and add our directional light to our scene. So I'm gonna copy directional light. For the color of the light, I'm gonna grab the color that I created in here, something a bit lighter. Uh, so this blue, um, so let's see, D6 EAFF. D6 E A F F. Um, we'll stick with 0.5 as the intensity. That should be fine. Okay, and the position of the directional light right now is probably like right in the middle. So let's go ahead and move that. So we'll say directional light dot position dot set. And let's take a look at what I added. So it's negative 20, 10, and 10. So negative 20 on the X, 10 on the Y, 10 on Z. So that's going to give us a bit of a front highlight because it's if it's positive on Z, it's coming towards the camera. So the directional light, since uh, it's positive on Z, it's like over here. It's negative on X, so that's going to go this way over here. And then it's positive on Y, which means it's going to go up here. And so we can kind of see, and we're going to be pointing basically to where the bench is almost, or no, rather actually will be pointing kind of to the middle of the street. That's probably where zero, zero is. And so now we can kind of see we get these more highlighted left side and less highlighted buildings. And that looks pretty nice. It's a bit bright. So I might turn that down just a little bit. So it's a little more subtle. Okay, that looks good. Do you have a very light background? So maybe I'll change this from blue to dark blue. Okay, so that matches a bit better. That's kind of nice. And we have one more type of light that I want to cover, which is the point light. The point light is basically just a light that exists in space. It has no directionality. It's very similar to a light that you might have in your room um, or a street lamp. So let's add some street lamps to our scene. I'm going to show you how this affects the scene real quick. So let's just add a couple of point lights. So I'm going to add a point light here. So you can see that basically you have a light emanating from this point. And so this is more similar to lighting that you would have like on an interior uh, in your home or some lamps or something like that. And so let's make a couple of these. I'm gonna clone this one, move it over here. And you can kind of change these lights. So the color is really gonna change the, the effect here. So if you have like an older type light bulb, you might have like a nice yellow color. If you have like an office light bulb, you might want to go with like a starchy kind of blue, depending on your setting. Um, there's also a distance. So I'm going to turn off my directional light for a moment to make this easier to see. So with this light, and let's actually turn off both of one of these guys. Okay, so with this light, you can see that it's affecting these two objects more than this object. And if I move it back here, now it's affecting all three. So there's a distance, which is default to zero. That means it's going to ignore it. So if I raise it up a little bit, all of a sudden everything's going to be dark. And then as the distance increases, the amount of light applied to these objects increases. Then there's a decay. So that's how much, how quickly the light loses power. And then there's also the intensity. So there's a few different things we can add here to change the effect of the light. And so we get this nice bright highlight over here if it's very close, can raise it up a little bit so it's not quite so dramatic. And then let's turn this guy back on. So that's actually quite a lot of light here. So 
Let's turn the distance for this guy off a little bit. The decay, let's go up a bit. And the intensity is good. So let's turn our directional light back on. And so one of the things we want to do to create more realistic lighting is have lots of light sources. Because in real life, we often have a lot of different light sources in one area, like the sun, some lamps in your house, um, lights coming from different rooms and reflections on objects and things like that. There is also the spotlight. This is not going to be supernatural um, unless you are creating a scene that has a stage or you know you want to just create like a stylized look but the spotlight has a position and a directionality and then it also has this kind of like cone of light so you can kind of see by adding the spotlight in i've added these really high highlights but only where the spotlight exists so it's kind of cutting off this sphere um, and if i change that so for example if i update the distance you can see where it starts to actually get to these objects and then apply light to them there's also an angle so i can apply light very narrowly and there's a few other options this isn't going to be like a very natural thing to add to your scene unless you have a stage or something like that so i'm going to spend a little less time on the spotlight let's go ahead and add in some point lights and let's make some lamps for our little scene to kind of finish our street scene um, so i'm going to go back to the scene I'm gonna scroll, scroll down a bit to after we add the sidewalk and just add in some lamps. So let's call these our street lamps. And so we'll add some geometry to represent the street lamps along with a point light to emanate light. So I'm gonna use basically the same for loop that I used in the previous video. So I'm gonna start at one end of the street and I'm gonna go to the other end of the street. And I'm, this, I'm not gonna put as many lamps as there are sidewalks. So let's try X plus equals five to start. And then we can change it if that's not enough. So let's add the lighting first, and then we'll add in um, some geometry to create the lamp. So I'm gonna take the light. This light, obviously the position matters a lot. Um, so we have a point light. This is a, a very red light. I'm, I'll leave it like that for a moment so it'll, it'll stand out a lot. We can use light here since it's inside of a for loop. I don't need like a more specific variable name. Obviously, oh, whoops, I forgot to put X here. Obviously X is gonna be the X value. For our scene, we're gonna need to move back a bit on Z and then up a bit on Y to place our lamp sort of like right here along our scene. So let's implement that. So for the Y value, let's just try like three. I can't remember. How tall are our trees? The trees are between two and four. So three is good. It'll be kind of in the middle. Although the trees are pretty tall. Let's try 2.5 and see how that looks. For the heights and then for Z, let's just start with like negative two. So that'll be almost to the sidewalk. We might need to move it a bit more. Um, so that should add those lights. And so now we can see this red light and it's very bright. Uh, so that's not exactly what we want. So let's turn down the intensity by a lot. Let's say 0 0.25. Okay, that's still quite bright, but now you can kind of see it's a little bit more localized. Let's try turning it down more. Okay, now we don't really see much at all. So let's go with 0 0.25 and let's just like make some adjustments so I actually don't know what that 100 refers to distance oh okay so let's turn the distance like way down let's say like two for the distance okay so now it's barely affecting anything so maybe we can turn the intensity back up okay so now you can see some highlights so that looks pretty good let's turn the distance up a bit more Okay, so now we get that kind of street lamp effect where we kind of just have a few dots going along. So that looks pretty nice. And then let's get rid of the red color because it's not, we don't want it to be bright red. Let's get a nice kind of warm yellow. So I'm gonna copy that and paste it in there. Put the zero X first. Okay, so that's kind of nice. Now we have like a few lights along our path. The intensity is actually a little bit high, so let's turn the intensity down. Okay, 
that looks pretty good. We're kind of highlighting the path. And now to kind of reinforce the idea of these like street lamps, let's put some geometries there. And we will change the materials in a bit, so don't too worry too much about that because we will make them blend in a bit more. For our lamp, we're gonna need a little cylinder, kind of like our tree as the base. So I'm just gonna copy that. Okay, so we have a cylinder. This height is random. We don't want a random height, so let's just use the same height that we used for our lamp. Okay, that looks fine. Um, we have the mesh standard material. We have the color for the lamps. I want like a dark, like gray material. So I'm going to go with that. Okay. And then let's say this is the lamp base and let's just add this to the scene. We don't really need these to be in a group. So we'll add our lamp base. Let's take a look at that. And I forgot to set the position. So let's say lamp base dot position dot set. So we'll go with X again. We're gonna have to move it up on the Y half of 2.5. So 2.5 divided by two is like 1.25. For Z, we need them to be in the same place. So let's say negative two. Okay, and they're obviously way too thick. So let's try 0.1 and point one, let's just make them little sticks. Even that's like too big. Let's try 0 0.05. I don't want these to stick out so much. That's nice, pretty subtle. And I only have four of them, which is fine, but maybe I'll move this over a bit. So maybe I'll say plus 2.5 at the beginning. So they're kind of centered. And so that looks pretty good. Sometimes they are gonna get stuck in the tree. That's okay, I'm not gonna worry too much about that. So then let's put a little lamp on top of the tree. And so we can use our icosahedron again, but we'll just use one of them for this. So I'm gonna grab that down from our leaf. So let's just grab all of this and then I'll kind of fix some of it. So these are our leaves. We're just using one of them. Um, so this is our lamp geo and our lamp material and then our lamp itself. Don't want it to ran, be random. We don't want them all the same size. So let's try 0 0.25 and see how that looks. So let's get a color for the lamp, something similar to the light. And then we have the lamp geometry, lamp material. And then for the position, I don't need this stuff. I'm just gonna get rid of that. So the position is the same as the light. So I'm just gonna copy that and paste it here. And then we can leave the random rotation so they're not all the same. So then we'll add our lamp. I gotta change all these guys to lamp. And let's change this to scene. Okay, so now we have our like little lamps and that looks fine. We're gonna work on the material a little bit later. So it looks kind of ugly right now, but don't worry about that. I could make it slightly transparent if I wanted to do that. So one thing that I could do with the material is I could say lamp material.transparent equals true and lamp material.opacity and let's try 0 0.5 and see how that looks. Okay, so that's a little bit too transparent, but you can see the effect there. Um, so let's try like something much higher like 0.8. And that's pretty good. Maybe even more. I don't want to see so much of the lamp base. Let's try 0.95. So it's just a little bit transparent. Okay, that looks pretty nice. And so now we can kind of see the glow coming off of the lamp. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so we've added some lighting. Now let's switch over to our materials.